Are you ready for Sex and Relationship Wednesday? You know, the vibrators and the sex toys aren't enough for us anymore. We want to have sex, and we get bored having sex with the same person over and over again. Tonight, should you stay married after an affair? Are you bored with your partner? Is it okay to use sex to get what you want and dating after divorce? Would you agree with me that we in this country don't really know what relationships need? And later, would you and your spouse share your home and your bed with another couple? Showtime's polyamory married and dating features people who are doing just that. And it's not just for the sex. Okay, so let's get started. Welcome to our Sex and Relationship Wednesday. Joining me, professional matchmaker Siggy Flicker. I also have Emily Moore, star of Bravo's Misadvised, and Amy Alcon, nationally known as the Advice Goddess. Amy, let's get right into it. What to do if you're bored in a marriage? Well, actually, research shows that variety literally is the spice of happiness and that you really have to shake it up, but just in small ways. The researcher actually has a baby, and they just go off on the weekends to a hotel. Even if you're just arguing about cocktail peanuts instead of what you argue about at home, it actually makes a difference. So I, I'm not sure I heard all of what you're saying. So it's, it's make change, do yes. different things, and create opportunities to be alone and have relationships. Yes, that's yeah. very important. But that variety is so important. But people think they have to make huge changes, but it's actually shake your daily environment up in some way. Emily, variety, you agree with that? Oh yeah, absolutely. You have to have variety in a relationship. Things get stale, they get old in a relationship, and you have to do things to spice it up. You know, like it, like if it's a date night, people say, oh, we hate planning that, it should just be spontaneous, but you know what? You've got kids, you've got a life, you've got a routine, and you have to work in that date night. You have to do it. Siggy, if somebody is bored in a marriage, is that a warning sign, or is that just to be expected? I think that you need to pop the bubble. Marriage relationships take work. It's like a car. If you don't put gas in your car, the car will not get from point A to point B. You have to spice it up and you have to do something spectacular. Every week you got to focus on your relationship. And I know if I didn't, I'd be divorced again. Give me an I example. Have to have a what date night. Example of something spectacular. You've piqued my interest. Something spectacular. I, I, what does that spe mean? Spectacular is this. I don't know if everybody can do this, but every Wednesday night, regardless of what we're doing, my my husband and I will have a date night. I get dressed up. I make sure I'm wearing a nice dress. I put on lip gloss. I get my hair done. We go to a restaurant. And if we're lucky enough, and I have my mother helping me out with the kids, we stay in a hotel overnight. Spectacular. It's, 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 it's getting out of the routine and possibly popping the bubble and doing something in a different atmosphere. Let's go out to our callers, Chantel in Ontario. Chantel, you got something? Yes, I just want to talk about being unfaithful myself. Uh, I have okay, been... hold on, hold on. Okay. So that is our next topic. Our next topic is what if somebody cheats in a marriage? Are you married? Oh, well, I've been for 20 years with the same person, so and it's pretty much marriage, yes. Yeah. Pretty much married, but not marriage per se. Did you have feelings about that? Did you want to be married? Oh, no, I never believed in marriage because of the way I grew up. I saw my mom and dad cheating on them and on then, each other. So, okay, so, so you stayed in this in All right, you stayed in this non-marriage, which was effectively a marriage, except you didn't get the legal benefits of being in a marriage, and now you went ahead and cheated. Uh, um, excuse me? You went ahead and cheated. Yes, I did. I did uh, previously before being with that person, too. There is no relation that I have been faithful into. Okay, and which I is, which of course, you've never had any model of that. Let's get to your question. Do you have a question? Well, I was wondering if it's, you know, in the family, is it hereditary, like hereditary, or is it no. like... Uh, okay, ladies, who I would like to like ring to... in? Heredity or environment? Amy, go. Actually, you have to, well, I would answer this by saying you have to commit to being an ethical person. This is not what comes naturally. Actually, cheating probably comes naturally. You have to decide to be ethical, make a commitment, and stick to that. Well, people have intimacy disorders, and they feel terribly, terribly uncomfortable in close relationships, and they either leave them or cheat on them or force the other person to leave. This is how psychologically these things get managed. Ziggy, do you ever see this? Yes, I see it a lot with clients. It's called insecurity. When people are insecure within themselves, what they do is they act upon it. I have several people who are in relationships and they end up going out there and cheating. And when I ask why, well, I think that he was about to do it first. So I wanted to get it out of the way. There is no excuse. I agree with this caller. You don't need to be married. You don't need to have a piece of paper to be in a relationship, but you need to be committed to each other. You need to be committed and do the work. Emily, you agree? 
Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think that you have to communicate in a relationship, and that's when things start coming up, and you want to cheat, and you want to be with other people. It's because there's been a breakdown in your communication, and I always say that couples mm -hmm. just have to talk about these things because if you're not discussing, you know, oh, I've, my eyes are starting to wander. And the thing that the thing that really gets to me is that couples agree till death do us part, and we're going to walk down the aisle, and we're going to be monogamous, but they never talk about what's going to happen if someone else comes into the picture, and there's someone else that we're interested in, and what, how are we going to deal with that situation? Because it's inevitable. Look at your families of origin, ladies and gentlemen. If you had severe cheating, chaos, drama in your family, you will find somebody to recreate that with in your life. And if you don't find that person, you will be the person that perpetrates and recreates it yourself. Deborah in California. Hi, Dr. Drew. What's up? Um, I've been on both sides of the coin to say I've been cheated on and I have actually been with a cheater who was mm -hmm. cheating on his girlfriend slash wife. He married her after we were cheating. He was cheating with me and he met her by cheating on his first wife. Just the love of your life, Deborah. Well done. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and then the other one that cheated on me did it with my best friend in my house, in my bed. Okay. Oh, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's, God. You're laughing, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's I can't. Yeah. Ziggy's, <laughs> Ziggy's holding her. Go ahead, Ziggy. Respond. Ah. No, when somebody when somebody cheats, it's a disconnect in the relationship. Once a cheater, always a cheater. I am sorry, you got exactly what you deserve in the end. When you make a, a commitment to somebody, you don't stray away. And I agree with the breakdown of communication. If something is happening in the relationship, it is imperative. It is so important to be able to express yourself so you don't get to a point where you're looking the other way or you're straying away from your relationship. Amy, you have a comment? Yeah, I think it's very very important to live consciously we don't do that we want to believe the best in people and that's really the worst way because life will eventually come bite you and it'll bite you harder if you let it delay uh you know what's the caller's name again i'm sorry deborah is it deborah you still there yeah deborah i feel so bad for you it's just you you bad you got a broken picker you pick bad people i was cheated on before i was with the cheater himself. I, I get it. Did was your dad absent or something? You never had a relationship with your dad growing up? No, he was around. Well, where did you where did you get involved with these cheaters? Um, a bad boy complex maybe. Okay. And how was dad? How was your relationship? Was dad kind of one of those guys? Was he an alcoholic or anything? No, no. not at all. Weird. I don't I know guess where you got I that. I was just a rebel kid. Well, there's usually reasons for that, but maybe it's just one of those things. But thanks for that call. Next up, more questions and answers with Siggy, Emily, Amy, and your calls. And later, we're going to segue from this conversation to two couples. When we're talking about cheating, these two couples share their partners. That's right. And, but at the same time, they say they're committed. Yeah, I need a blackboard to understand this one, but we'll be right back.